way of saying, hey, I'm being arrested for NBA. Pathetic. I'm not even on the board. Hey, it's your brother Chuck. I'm in jail here. Yeah, you gotta donate money to MTA to get me out of jail. <laughs> From one, one person, 100 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. You raise 310 online, so it brings you to 590. $600 to send one kid to camp. Awesome! So we're up to the 600. From my perspective as a nurse and a mom, during that week that they're at camp, the wheelchairs, the muscular dystrophy, the body issues just all fade away. And I'm happy to welcome you to our fourth annual Iron Pour in downtown White Bear Lake. Well, it's a Tuesday night. Who wants to cook? So I'll cook everything. <laughs> I take a week's vacation and I cook. Uh, it is the only thing I do socially. <laughs> and I needed a national excuse. I had a special invitation from Bill Pope, and I ran into him and he told me I had to be here. <laughs> so I'm here, and I'm happy to be here. It's a great night and beautiful weather and great food and good neighbors. The only place I use the grill is here. I got the canopies for here. I built the trailer for here. An event like this shows what community is all about, what it's like when we were growing up where everybody talked over the fence and now we can do it on one night a year and instill in everybody it's okay to do it more than that. The goal is so a mug like mine is known in the neighborhood but a stranger is identified. There we go. Thank you. It's all about bringing more safety and security into your community, into your home, into your neighborhood. And I think it's, it's, it's great to see the community coming out. It really makes you feel this is what it's all for, it's the freedoms that we have here. Visiting, they're looking to give people the boot. And I don't mean a kick in the pants, I mean the boot. Okay, so we're gonna find what this is all about. And with me right now is Ken with the fire department. Hi, Ken. Hi, how are you doing this evening? I'm good. This is a heavy boot. It's getting a little heavier. Why is this heavy? Well, the fire department is planned on a fundraiser this year. And this year, the fundraiser is a muscular dystrophy telethon. Uh, we're raising money for Jerry's kids. That is awesome. It's called the fill a boot. How clever, huh? You bet.
Last September, our local coverage led us to an event with international interest. We joined media makers from around the globe in traveling in and around the Republican National Convention to bring viewers a local perspective on this historic event. Here's a sample of what we saw and heard and the delegates we met inside the Excel Center in St. Paul. To our friends and neighbors on the Gulf Coast, our thoughts and prayers are with you. If you find faults with our country, make it a better one, because nothing brings greater happiness in life than to serve a cause greater than yourself. As you actually get down to the floor and recognize, wow, this is actually happening, and we're participating in the in the nomination process for for a major party, it, it becomes stunning very quickly, and it, it hits you pretty suddenly. Oh, I think it's fantastic. I mean, it's just to be a part of, not sit on the sidelines, but get into the game, try to move the ball forward. This is my first time as a as a national delegate. Um, I've been involved in the the Republican Party formally since 98. Minnesota actually is a very open process. Um, as you may know, we're, Minnesota is a caucus state rather than a primary state. And in the end, we don't have pledged delegates, at least on the, on the Minnesota side. So if I, I was elected as a delegate. Everybody knew I was a McCain supporter, but in the end, it's fully possible that I could have gone through the entire process without ever saying who I supported for president. In the end, they're voting for for, for me as a delegate, well, either they want me to, to serve them or they don't. Security was tight in, out, and around the Excel Energy Center in St. Paul before and during the 2008 RNC. Police and riot gear secured the streets during the protests. <laughs> while uniformed officers secured the Excel's perimeter. We've been keeping uh, the area safe. Uh, we keep an eye on things. We're basically the eyes and ears, and uh, we work with others. Uh, in case something were to come up, um, we get the word out and uh, ask for assistance. But so far, the convention's been going real well. We've been playing a, a good, secure role, and uh, we've had a good time here. Over 3,500 officers helped keep order throughout the four days, where even peaceful gatherings like this one at the state capitol. So take it over. <laughs> the potential to escalate. Love. Bike patrol officers trained for months before the convention. They were typically the first on the scene. We found that on the bicycles that we were able to get there faster than uh, the mobile, mobile field force because they were in vans. They had to walk back to their vans, jump in, then respond to where they were going. Where for us, we just jumped right on the bicycle and got to where we needed to be right away. Here we saw the agitation go up. We got there first. Um, a lot of the protesters, the media people that came up to us said, hey, you guys did a great job on a bicycle. And the media's, media did a very good job of, of showing the effectiveness. Police arrested more than 800 people in the Twin Cities compared to 152 at the Democratic Convention in Denver. Although we didn't witness any violence between protesters and police, Come on, guys. <laughs> we witnessed the aftermath of a protester who threw a sign breaking this Macy's window in downtown St. Paul. We also talked with the McCain supporter who says protesters threatened him. I've had people come up and get in my face. You know, one guy was going to hit me. You know, people say snide remarks. I mean, it's. I'm just here, you know, standing, I don't say anything back. Police say they anticipated sabotage on the part of some protesters and anarchists which is why the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension had their own cameras rolling. Whether any punishment results from the alleged misconduct among law enforcement officials remains to be seen. In St. Paul, this is producer Mary Klein with photographer Troy Sepian. This is the pool feed production truck. And by pool feed, I mean this is the, this is the truck that has the cameras that feeds all the other networks around the world. And so it's got 15 cameras and pretty much everywhere on the convention floor is covered. First area is the production area. 
and the director sits there along with the technical director, which is the guy that actually switches the cameras, along with the producer and uh, any associate director.